Welcome to BTI, that's Bible Training Institute. We open the scriptures every week, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Study with us and learn how to know God as a close, intimate, and personal friend, and learn what is soon to come upon this world. In Isaiah 56, the Bible says something about God's church. In verse 6, we want to pick up Isaiah 56 and verse 6. Are you there? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's read verse 6 together. Isaiah 56, beginning in verse 6. The Bible says, Also, also the, the sons of the stranger, stranger that join themselves, themselves to the Lord, Lord to serve Him, and, and to love the name of the Lord, to be His servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Now God prophetically is talking about the filling up of God's church, His house. And he's talking about the stranger joining, not just the Israelite, but those who are not Israel, those who are not part of the people of God. Verse 7 says, Even then will I, what's the next word? Bring, bring to my holy mountain. Is God going to bring people into this church? Yes. yes. Now, do you know that God's not going to bring them in by the groves, by the hundreds, by the thousands, by the millions, until he gets the church ready? So first he has to do something with us. Our heart, our home, our church. And then he can start bringing them in. Do you want him to bring them in? Amen. Then God has to get us ready for it. Yeah. And so it says, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful. Where? In my house of prayer. Now notice, the closer we get to the end of the end, the closer we get to the end of time, God's house, his church, should look like something. What should it look like? Look what it takes says. It should look like a house of prayer. prayer. You know that on persecution, the devil doesn't say their own children. No. You read Ezekiel. It says, spare not age, spare not the women, even the woman that stoops with age. You know, that's what the Bible says, Sister Sherman. It says, even the woman that is stooped with age, spare them not. Mm -hmm. Little children. So then, God wants everyone to be getting ready, old and young. Amen. You think he's going to spare the ministry? No. Guess who's going to get it the worst? <laughs> the ministry. And, and I said, I was talking to the Lord the other day. I said, Lord, this is not really anything to play with because you know that if you do a search, Google search, and you just put my name in there, and you put Sunday, my name comes up. You put Sunday law, my name will come up. So then, what do you think will be one of the first people that <laughs> And somebody said, oh, I want to preach. And people are all over the internet trying to, you know, look, if I, I'm not rushing to get on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But I believe that there will be a war if we don't so that you and I can get ready. Mm -hmm. But if we have God with us, we don't have to be afraid. Mm -hmm. And so God is trying to tell us, please, while there's time, let's develop a relationship. My house should be called a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. What must we learn to do right now? Pray. 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 That means that the nation is bankrupt right now. Politically, economically. Socially, environmentally. And God is saying, please, don't you understand what this means? The end of all things at hand. We had a global crisis. And we're sitting around, almost like we're in a fairy tale, having a picnic. Coming to church and just thinking everything is normal, not, not understanding that God is saying, please, you've got to be sober now. Mm -hmm. How do I know? First Peter 4. Look what it says. First Peter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things at hand, be therefore sober. Sober, sober, and do what? Well, I swear unto prayer. prayer. Why? Because in every difficulty, we're to see a call, call to prayer. prayer. Do you know that God is not sleeping right now? That's right. You see, the, the, the liberals see the problems of the conservative, and the conservative sees the problem of the liberal, but God sees it all. Mm -hmm. How can you be a conservative and complain about abortion and then tell somebody to get an abortion? Mm -hmm. See, they're, they're uncovering details now that is making both the liberal and the conservative show that we all have problems. Mm. But now, my brothers and sisters, God is looking at the mutual condition that sin has brought upon this world, and you know that God is not sleeping. Mm -hmm. Do you know, brothers and sisters, that all of the brutality, all of the injustice, all of the oppression, God hates it. And God can't bear much longer. You know that when God came down to Egypt, although the time had run out for Israel being in Egypt, you know what really got his attention? The Bible says, you go back and says, you read it sometime. It says that God heard the cries mm -hmm. of the oppressed. Mm -hmm. The moan of their cry came up into his ears, and God says, I can no longer sit back. I've got to interpose. And we're seeing now an oppression worse than the Egyptians and the Hebrews ever saw. Mm -hmm. Today, 
And God is saying, please, don't you understand what this means? Mm. Be sober. Be, don't be careless. We have to be honest, please. Let's be honest with ourselves. Don't just think about what's happening out there. What's happening in our own homes? Mm. We've got to now say, dear God, show us how to fix these problems. Mm. Now, if God can help us to fix our problems, guess what will happen when we go into the community? Mm. Then so we can help them. Yeah. With the same thing that God helped us with. And one of the great tools is how to... If you were blessed by this study and would like to be a part of the BTI, that's Bible Training Institute, simply have your Bible pen and paper handy and check out our weekly studies by logging on to molministry.com forward slash BTI. Also, tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the latest Maranatha.